Hey, I'm in the kitchen today getting ready to process some meat to store it in the freezer so my family can enjoy it later. And I wanted to share some of the techniques I use to make sure this meat is super high quality and tasty for my family. If you want to see how I got to this stage of the meat preparation process, check out our videos on how to eviscerate or gut a deer, how to remove the pelt or skin, and how to debone a deer. While I'm deboning, I take a bit of time to pull this shiny silver stuff off here as much as I can, but boy, you'd be all day doing that. So I get it fairly clean. You can see on this side, the big tissue still in the back. And I'm gonna show you how I take time to take that off now before I vacuum seal it and put it in the freezer. The first step is I have a really sharp knife. I've got the Cabela's commercial grade set just for meat processing, and I've been super impressed with them. I process a lot of deer with this set. I like a flay knife for this work because this shiny tissue, a lot of people call it, that's not the scientific name of course, can be really thin, like a sheet of paper thin. So I want to fillet that off there so I'm not just hacking and wasting a lot of the venison. So the first thing I do, I've got a cutting board, a little drip edge on it, that just keeps stuff from getting messy. I'm going to turn this around and I'm just going to literally fillet, I'm going to get my knife going underneath there and I'm going to pick up on it. I don't want to waste any meat, so I'm just, and you can see that spot's gone. This would be really chewy. You know, if you fed that to your family, go, oh man, I don't like venison. Take this off there, prepare it appropriately, and this loin will cut with a fork. Just a tip that I've learned that's really helpful. You're going to have stuff like this, I call it trimmings. You're going to want to dispose that somehow. So I've got a five gallon bucket here, I just put it in there and keep on going. So I'm just literally. Find anything that I don't want to consume or my family to consume. And just with this really narrow blade knife, a fillet knife, so to speak, take that off there. And you can get a hold of it and lift it up. It's almost like skinning a deer. Once you lift it up, it's really easy to glide under there and not remove any excess meat. And once you get on a big string of meat want to come off there, just make a cut and start over. You'll notice this shiny stuff is not over the entire loin. Well, it was inside the deer. And when I was taking this out of deer, I just took my time a little bit. You can see knife marks and did a decent job doing this in the field. The more you do out there, the less you're dealing with in here. My family really likes venison. And I think one of the reasons is I take the time to prepare it versus just hacking it up or quartering the deer, throwing it in the freezer. That's that can be kind of gnarly tasting. You can see I've got almost all that off there already. So now I'm going to flip it over and you're going to say, oh, look at this. I actually leave the big, this would be sinew, you know, Native Americans might have used this to back a bow with or something like that, make something out of. I leave that on there when I pull the loin out of a deer just to protect it until I get ready to process the meat. Sometimes you can grab some of it and just peel it off like that. It's a little quicker than using a knife. It's not precision work. But when you get here, it's tied pretty tight. What I like to do, again, get my really thin blade fillet knife and start in the middle. And this side is going to be much thicker. This is the side right next to the spine. You can tell how flat it is. That was laying right next to the spine. And I'm just going to get under it. And I'm going to tear as long as, and you can see very thin meat. You can see the shiny spot there, just no meat. You can tear this, but sometimes meat will want to come with it. And if I sense that happening, like right there, meat staying with it, I go back to my fillet knife and just get right under there. This is tougher than the meat, so you can actually turn your blade up just a smidge, five degrees. If you turn it towards the meat and start digging in, Turn up just a little bit, like a shallow running fishing lure, and run right down this, and then do this. Oh, starting to get a little meat with it, so I'm gonna take my knife and just pick up on this. You know, it's just like, again, removing the skin. You pick up on it, and that tension will let you rub your knife right on the edge. There we go. You don't want to be chewing that. You can imagine if Native Americans use that almost like leather, you don't want to be chewing it. I'm going to be cleaning up here a little bit, but I want to remind you, you know, why does anyone take the time to do this? Well, 
There are some great processors out there. You could pay to do it. I have a lot of pride in processing my own meat and make sure it's just of the highest quality, made it clean, kill, all that stuff. But research has shown that free ranging wild animals, especially white tailed deer, they got a real narrow mouth, real narrow muzzle. They're selective feeders. So they're eating what they need at that time, mineral wise and also, you know, protein, whatever, carbohydrates. And that ends up being a much better meat than like a cow in a feedlot feeding on a balanced diet. And you think about feedlot, those cows are walking in excrement of other cattle all day or whatever. Wild deer, wild game in general, are extremely clean. And research has shown that a lot of wild critters are the highest quality meat we can provide our family. You notice the shape of the loin is the same because I, I haven't taken much off here. I'm just removing the outer layer. Okay, now back here on a loin, you can see this shiny stuff goes all the way through. I'm just gonna take my thumb, do this, and I'll save this. You can see, again, you don't wanna be feeding your family that, right? That's, that would be really tough. So that's gonna, I'm gonna clean that up later, and that will go in my hamburger bucket. One more big thing right here. I'm just gonna put my knife on the very inside of that. You can see again right here, some shiny stuff right there. Gonna take that off, put it in the hamburger bucket. We're grinding that up and it'd be okay there, but not for a cut like a, a nice loin. You may wanna butterfly this, put some cream cheese or seasonings in there. A little butter works good. But now, look at that. I mean, very, very clean, super high quality meat. I've moved on from a loin to a roast, and you may say, well, gosh, that's a small roast, but remember, if you watched the previous videos, I debone and then break down each muscle group. So this is one muscle, primarily one muscle, out of what you might call the ham or the rear of a deer on one side. And when you do that, you get these individual, mainly pure meat that will cook really well. And there's a major lymphatic system right in the middle of that ham, if you will. So when I pull each muscle apart, I can remove that and keep your family from eating part of the lymphatic system. And I flip it over, you see some fat on the back. This dough was in great shape and starting to store fat for the winter. You don't want to render down or save venison fat unless you get a really special use for that because it's not as tasty as like bear fat. This can be pretty ugly tasting if you try to cook with it. Take it from me because I've tried. I left some of this on there again just for protection of meat while I was storing it till I had time to prepare it. And I can see some major shiny skin here of course. That would be really tough. That's something again Native Americans might use as a way to bind something together or use it almost like leather or something to strap something on. You know, I'll be chewing on that. So I'm just gonna start here, get my knife right under that. And just, I'm pointing, you can tell, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm pointing up just a little bit because that's so tough. I usually won't cut through it. Very little meat stuck to that. And then I just start going the other way and I'm pointing up and pulling at the same time. that in my scrap bucket. If your meat's really cold and firmer, this is easy. If it's a little bit more uh, thawed out or you know not stiff, really warm like a fresh deer, this is slide all around. So I like to chill my meat for a day or two, let it stiffen up a little bit before I start working on it. Even little ends or tips that have that shiny stuff on there a large amount, I'm gonna remove it up. I'm gonna save this for the hamburger grinder, what I call the hamburger pile. But if you put this in your grinder, probably won't ball up a good quality grinder, but it won't taste too good. So take just a little extra time and just take that off there. Your family will be begging for you to go hunting again, which is a good thing, and get some more venison. Okay, back to my big roast here. Slide my knife under this. Get it going and I can flay back the other way. See how much cleaner that is now? This part of the roast kind of curves a little bit, but I can get my knife under here and lift up 
Even though the meat's not straight, I'm putting pressure up and that helps my knife run just like I would like it to. Once that side's complete, I flip it over. This is about like the back of a loin here, much thicker, bigger, and got some fat attached to it. So I'm gonna take that off, get down to the pure meat level, come back the other way, see if, my, if it's wanting to pull easy or stick. And you can tell I'm just kind of taking my knife there and freeing that up. When sharing this technique, I just kind of expect a few comments. Oh my gosh, you're wasting all this meat, but I'm really not. I'm taking off connective tissue or fat, something you don't want to be chewing anyway. And when you get this grade A, just almost pure meat, no one can complain about that. I follow the same process on all the meat we removed from the deer. It makes beautiful meat, whether I'm gonna now make a cube steak or grind it or whatever I'm doing, I take everything off but the meat. Once I've completed that, I move on to the next process, which is vacuum sealing. Vacuum sealer, of course, takes all the air out, pulls even some of the moisture out. And then what I really like about the Cabela's unit, you can use these bags, just put that in a refrigerator, thaw it out safely and without a mess when you're ready to prepare it for a meal. Made this bag a little longer because it's for a loin. And I just simply, you know, label it, hey, it's a loin, because, you know, once they're stacked in the freezer, you want to know what you're grabbing, put the date on there, because put my loins in pretty straight. You can see I got this just right. And that way, the vacuum sealer would just pull all this up just like a vacuum, pull it up right next to it. There's no air space, no freezer burn. it would be perfect shape just like this when we pull it out of the freezer and get ready to make a meal. You can see it just take the shape of the loin. Just let it seal up here. And you've got a great seal. I can still read my date on here on this one. You can see how it just form fit that piece of venison. Nothing's going to leak out. It is in great shape. There's just nothing there. Baby's going to be perfect. Whether I consume this, take it out, thaw it out, and make a meal out of it a month from now or 12 months from now. My family and I have been processing our own venison for decades, and I have found the vacuum sealer to be the very best way to protect the quality of the meat. I've tried wrapping and baggies, freezing water, all that stuff. This is by far the best I've used throughout my career. This is the only steps necessary for whole cuts of meat, like a loin or roast or something. If you're doing burger, of course you got it ground up, you're gonna do the same thing. Put the appropriate amount of burger in a vacuum bag, just like this, one pound, two pounds. Do the same process. I flatten it out. I don't make a ball and put it in here. I kind of make it flat before I seal it. And I've learned that stacks in my freezer and it gives me more room so I can add more venison. I hope you enjoy the tips and techniques we shared in this video and that they help you and your family enjoy quality venison. In the next video in this series, we'll take some of the meat out of the freezer and show you how we prepare it all the way through. We'll probably be using a Cabela smoker and pellet grill and show you everything we do to end up with a super high quality meal.